Okay, um, so now I'd like to talk a little bit um, about desktop automation here at Bluebeam, uh, what we do, uh, the tools we use, how we use them, and my general experience uh, so far. Um, so again, the product is uh, our Windows desktop application, Bluebeam Review. Um, our main automation tool we use here is uh, Ranarik Studio. Um, we also use a Seculiax library for some uh, image validation uh, assertions. Uh, for source control, uh, we use Git on a Bitbucket server. Uh, test management, we use TestRail. And uh, continuous integration, continuous, continuous deployment, uh, we use Bamboo. So, what is Ranarex uh, Studio? Um, not many people have heard of this tool, um, but it's a commercial uh, GUI test automation framework that supports automation of uh, desktop, uh, web-based, and uh, mobile applications. Um, and so what are some of the reasons why we chose it? Uh, first and foremost, it supports uh, WinForms and w WPF desktop <laughs> applications. Um, it has a good uh, object repository uh, creation and management system. Um, it also includes uh, a very good tool for inspecting UI elements called uh, Renderic Spy. Um, and one of the big, I guess, points here is that both uh, technical and non-technical people um, are able to use it. So it provides solutions for uh, uh, both types of people. Right, uh, Renderic Studio uh, has an IDE that provides a codeless interface um, for creating tests. Um, it's modular, modular based, um, but it's also based on C Sharp. So behind the modules, you have um, uh, the Renderix library, uh, C Sharp code uh, based on OpenAPI that provides uh, flexibility um, if you wanted to go to a codeless uh, approach. Um, at the time, it was cheaper than most commercial tools we evaluated. And last is actually one of my favorites. Uh, it has a built-in recording feature um, for anyone that's done UI automation before. Um, video recording is, is crucial for debugging um, failing tests. Um, to me, that's a, it's a big, big point, uh, selling point for this. Um, so how do we use it? Initially, we uh, experimented with a mostly coded approach. So we used the software exactly how they wanted us to use it. Uh, we leveraged it to uh, create module-based tests. Um, and so there's a picture here. I'm not gonna go too in-depth and give a demo of the software. Um, if you'd like, you can go to their website. They have a trial. You can download it and, and you know, mess with it yourself. Um, but just to give a general idea of, of what uh, their modules look like. So this right here is uh, uh, a Renrix module. As you can see, there is a, uh, an action table. Um, and down here is uh, an object repository where you keep uh, uh, definitions for all your UI elements belonging to your application. Um, and so the idea is you can drag and drop uh, elements into your action table and, and select an action that you want to take on them. Uh, again, no coding required. It's um, drag, drop, drag, drop. Pretty re relatively simple. Um, so this approach worked for us, but we realized quickly that we could not scale this uh, as smooth as we want, especially for an application as, as large as ours. Um, we realized that uh, we would end up with with way too many modules, um, it would be this gigantic project that uh, we wouldn't be able to, you know, uh, support. And on the on adding to that, it's very difficult to find people with uh, a Renderix experience, um, IDE experience. <laughs> um, so this is another, uh, I guess, uh, screenshot of Renderix. Uh, once you've created those modules, this is how you put together a test case, pretty much. Uh, each one of these uh, little red icons here is a module. Um, so you'd have a module for starting your application, and then you'd have a module for doing X, Y, Z, right? You might have a module for closing your application. And again, um, 
this is pretty much drag and drop. You have your, your project uh, explorer on the side with your modules, and you're able to just drag and drop it into a test case. Um, so if you are looking to go to a codeless approach, um, this is a, it's a good tool. Um, but how do we use it now? Um, so cur currently we use a mostly coded approach. Um, we did this to add uh, much more flexibility and again for scaling. Uh, with a, a, a largely coded approach, it's much easier uh, to scale the project and it's much easier to find people with uh, that coding experience that have maybe done some SM work or some you know, uh, Selenium work onto your, uh, you can bring those types of people in versus having to train you know, someone in RANRX every single time like you bring someone into the project. Um, we use a select few of RANRX's features still, uh, their object repository, test runner, and of course, again, my favorite video recording. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it's all in a, a C sharp. Uh, so, this is a basic diagram of our desktop uh, automation architecture. Um, we basically create wrappers around the RenderX libraries um, ourselves. Uh, we use a model similar to a page object model, if any of you are familiar um, with that design model. Um, there's not a name for it for desktop testing. Uh, I just like to call it Dialhawk object model. Um, and those feed into uh, uh, common actions and uh, uh, business logic um, actions, and this entire library um, we can then call in our test projects, our test scripts, uh, and our, our test suites. Um, one thing I've, I've learned uh, in doing automation, um, and I touched on this earlier, is that you have to, to kind of give it the same respect as you do your, uh, your, your actual product. Um, if you want something long-term, uh, scalable, reliable, and maintainable, um, you basically have to treat it like a development project. You have to plan it out, give it the resources it requires, and uh, kind of bake it into your process. Um, moving on to our test execution, uh, we run smoke tests uh, on every build. Those are automatically uh, kicked off every time we get a new build, and it's a general health check. Um, for our application. Um, it's relatively quick feedback that can execute with minimal to no supervision. Um, and one of that, again, that's one of the benefits of automation is that we're able to run these tests whenever we want and have them uh, run quicker. Um, show of hands, how many of you trust your developers? <laughs> I don't see, I see two. Okay, that's good. That's good, I, I um, yeah. Uh, so, one of the benefits of, of having like a, an automation, um, suite of automation tests like this with uh, your sanity to, or your smoke tests, right, is that you're able to now test things that you wouldn't have time to test otherwise. Um, with manual testing, right? If you have, uh, let's say, a week before your release, there's a lot of things you might want to touch um, that you can't do with, like, unless you have a team of, of a bunch of manual testers. With automation, once those tests are set up, you can run those, um, you know, pretty much whenever you want. Um, so moving on, um, our tests are triggered uh, through Bamboo. Our results, our pass fail results are automatically posted to uh, our test management software, test rail, and then uh, if we need them, uh, we have detailed logs stored um, in Bamboo as artifacts. Um, and this is another diagram. Uh, it's a diagram of how our test execution works on our environments. Uh, each environment um, is a remote Bamboo agent. Um, and so they basically sit there idle, waiting for a trigger. Um, in this case, our trigger is a new build of our, our uh, application. Um, 
When that happens, we build our automation library, download the build onto the test environment, uh, perform installation, execute tests, um, and then uninstall, clean up the system so that it's, it's ready for uh, the next uh, batch of tests, and then export uh, results. <laughs>